Well, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the Peace and Prosperity Podcast. We are having our second episode. We are so excited and everything that we're doing here. The thing about Peace and Prosperity, this is a global movement. Yes, my co-host Jen is on the other side. Well, in her case, she might, I'm on the other side, but she's in Australia. I'm in, uh, in the United States, in North America. But we bring in guests from all over the world, and our guest today is from New Zealand. So we're going to be bringing them on shortly. But again, my name is Chris Salem, and I work alongside my co-host Jennifer Matthews. And we interview experts, coaches, entrepreneurs, business owners that help help you finally build harmony between your life commitments and the prosperity you desire. So now I'm going to pass it over to Jen, who will introduce today's interview guest. Awesome! Thanks, Chris. Um, today, we're actually going to be talking to Oliver Larson, and Oliver is an entrepreneur and is a coach, as Chris said, all the way from Auckland, New Zealand. Now, Oliver's passion is helping purpose-driven business owners figure out how they can make a difference in the world while establishing a sense of freedom. Now, after chatting to Oliver, I realised that he certainly is living the life of freedom. He lives in a beautiful cottage overlooking the water and the mountains, and his view is just amazing. However, his life was not always like that. And like many of us, he dealt with his own struggles of fear, self-doubt, which he managed to overcome. And he moved from charging $400 a month for coaching to now providing packages upwards of $25,000. Now, in this interview, we aim to pick Oliver's brains about his definition of freedom and how our mindset and our limited beliefs may be able to, may be stopping us from achieving our greatest desires. So, hey, Oliver, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for being with us. Hello, how art thou? Good morning. <laughs> doing awesome, doing awesome. Well, what it, are we going to start? Good morning for you guys and good evening for me. <laughs> well, it's only it's only just not morning. It's uh, it's twelve oh eight here, so it's actually it's good afternoon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, we're going to start off by just getting you to tell us uh, your story and how you came to be doing what you're doing today. Yeah, well, I'll make I'll give you the succinct version. <laughs> So ever since I was very young, I knew that I wanted to be helping people through my words. I wanted to be enabling freedom within others and enabling happiness within others. But our education system isn't really designed. It doesn't really have too many options for enabling freedom in the lives of others. And so I didn't even think that it would be a possibility to, to create an income uh, and create a life around enabling freedom within others. And so I sort of fell into, you know, when I left high school, I went into university studying something I was passionate about, but not really stoked on. I kind of went there just because it was the thing to do. Um, and then I took a bit of a, like, I only, I was only there for six months. And then I took a sort of a gap year for the rest of the year. Um, after that, I really sort of, I felt this calling in me to pursue a passion, but I still had that limiting belief of, oh, there's no way that I'll be able to, I didn't even see it as an option. Like it was just not on my radar to be helping people achieve freedom. And so I, the next best thing was to help to encourage passion within others. And so I went to film school and spent a year there. Uh, after that year, I went on to, uh, I worked through multiple jobs, sort of freelancing and, and doing film and TV jobs for a little while before working in a major TV news station uh, as part of their technical team. And through that job, I really came to see how little freedom we actually have. And I'm sure we'll delve further into the topic of freedom shortly. Uh, but it really came, became obvious to me how stuck in our heads we really are and how our, our culture is not set up, our society is not set up to be conducive to our growth. Uh, and so we really need to be proactive to, to establish that freedom, not only externally, but actually more importantly, internally. And what I saw in that job was a whole lot of people being interviewed on, on major news, like national news. And obviously in national news, we talk a lot about global issues, national issues, and, and big problems that humanity are facing. And we often look to politicians for these solutions to these problems. And the politicians, in, in my experience, have never really had very good answers. And they sort of do the best with what, they, what they've got. But they're not the ones out there creating 
meaningful solutions to the world problems that we face. Uh, and the people that are out there with meaningful solutions are the entrepreneurs. And yeah, so I saw this happening in TV and I also saw that the entrepreneurs weren't really given that much, uh, they weren't taken that seriously. They weren't really, I mean, it was kind of like, oh, here's such and such with his big idea, but now we're going to seriously ask the politicians the serious questions. And it made me think like, why are we, why are we doing this when we've got innovative, creative entrepreneurs that have actually got the power to solve meaningful world problems uh, who are, who are not able to express themselves and not given that, that freedom to, to actually go out there and make the difference that they can. So, uh, yeah, I was in that job for a year and a half before I just was like, no, I've had enough. I need to change. I need to focus on what's really going to light me up. And that's to help heal, um, the many things that need healing in this world. And I was very interested in personal training and I still wasn't really that clear on what I wanted to do with starting my own business so I went back to university I studied a physical therapy degree for four years and during that time I started getting some coaching of my own I started looking into mindset and personal development myself and I bumped into a coach who took me on board as uh, part of his youth leadership team he was quite an experienced coach and uh, working in quite a high level in the business and entrepreneur scene and yeah I was, I've been through coaching with him for a number of years now and when I finished that degree my business wasn't like like you say I was charging 400 500 a month at that stage and my business wasn't at a <clears throat> excuse me wasn't at a point where I could really take it full-time or even even really seriously part-time uh, so I went off and I got a physio job straight out of physio school worked there with a huge range of populations. It was really interesting to see people from all demographics. We see we see a little bit of that on TV, but it's still in that environment. I didn't really get to see all of all of the demographic of the country. And in this job, I really got a lot of experience dealing with people from all kinds of backgrounds and uh, ethnicities and professions and and all uh, yeah all different demographics. And it really allowed that developed my skills that helped to develop my skills uh, in in helping people with my words. And anyway, so I was in that job for one year, and then last last year I went part time with that job. I landed a a, a big contract um, through my coaching business, and that that enabled me to go part time. And then at the the first of January this year, the government put a beautiful medical incentive for me not to go back to work uh, in place and so I used it I just you know I wasn't really it wasn't really like oh this is this is happening so I can't work uh, but it was like you know that seems like a great time to draw a line in the sand and do what I actually want to do so yeah I left and now I'm uh, operating full-time with my coaching business Nice. now he's living the life <laughs> Yeah, and, and and just inside that, so last year I, in about October, I had, I had some intentions, and those intentions were in, in the form of words. They were, let me think back: self-expression, contentment, adventure, love and relationships, family, and independence. And that was in October. I put those intentions out there and I was practicing some affirmations every day uh, in, in regard to those. And we got to Christmas and I was like, I was about to move to where I am, which is out of Auckland, out of the main city in this beautiful place. And I was like, well, I've, I've, I've got the self-expression. I've got the contentment. And I just ticked all of those things off. And it was like, wow, I actually manifested every single thing that I wanted to manifest in the last three months. And that was quite a, yeah, powerful realization for me i was like wow i can literally set an intention and within three months i've got all of that and it wasn't go out and do all this stuff or manifest these results in the world as such but it was how would i want those results to make me feel because that's mm. really what we're after is the internal feeling of those of what those results will generate and so i, I went for the internal feeling instead and that was hundreds like 100 percent. you could almost say 110 percent cultivated within within three months yeah mm. wow cool and so so if you were to define freedom what would that mean to you defining freedom 
Well, I'd, I'd say that there's two parts to freedom. There's what we usually think of as freedom, which is external freedom. You know, like mm. the, the, the most extreme example of that would be not being in prison, right? <laughs> That's mm -hmm. like the opposite <laughs> of, be, of freedom. And so I'd love to share a quote briefly from Nelson Mandela. Um, so I, I'm not going to get it 100%, but it's something like, when, he, when I came out of prison, when I, was look, when I was walking towards the doors that would lead to my freedom, I realized that if I held on to bitterness and hatred, then I may as well still be in prison. Yeah. And so for, to me, that quote really represents the, the extreme side of, of external freedom, which is him actually being freed from prison but also the internal freedom and what he was saying there i believe is that if he if he doesn't achieve that internal freedom and real actually realize the internal freedom within himself then really the external freedoms won't come regardless of if he might not get put back in prison but his actions will always be uh governed by whether or not he's got that internal freedom or not so personally i see external freedom and internal freedom and of the two of those, personally, I focus on internal freedom because the external is only going to manifest from there. Yeah, I, I love that. It's always, uh, Oliver, like I said, like you said, it's an inside job, right? You know, what you do on the inside reflects on the outside. And I yeah. uh, love that quote from Nelson Mandela that you shared. Hmm. Fantastic. Okay, so when we're talking about freedom and we're talking about that internal freedom, because that's what we're focusing on today. We're focusing on, on our limited beliefs. We're focusing on how we feel about ourselves, our own self-worth, our own, you know, our own beliefs within what we can achieve. What are some of the factors that you think may play a part when it comes to really obtaining this true freedom? Mm, great question. Well, I think the, 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 the most important thing that we can do and the most important factor is awareness. Mm. And firstly, awareness of the fact that we, we don't have the, like, the things that we want to generate in our life actually come from a lack of freedom. Mm. And once we, once we have that awareness, it's, then, then comes the awareness of where am I not free? Where, where is there a lack of freedom? And the way that we can see that is through observing what happens in the mind. It all, it's always about what happens in the mind. If somebody gets angry at you and you have a problem with that, then it's you that has a problem with that. It's in your mind. You've got resistance towards that. And that's just a typical example. You know, if someone, if someone reacts badly to something that you said and, and you said it with all positive intentions, but they react badly, are you, do you have the internal freedom to be able to accept that person in that situation as it is and then respond in the way that's in alignment in the most, mm. um, in the most productive way and the way that's going to serve everyone? Or are you going to be had by your emotions all tied up and, re and react in which way, in which case we're probably not going to re receive that greater, there's probably not going to be that greater uh, knock-on effect from your actions. So I've, I'd say awareness number one. And how do we gain more awareness? Well, we'll, we'll go deep straight away. Spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely spiritual practice. You're talking Medi my language, Oliver. <laughs> yeah, meditation, breathing practices. I have a specific breathing practice that I do every day and I've done it for about four and a half years now. And, and meditation as well. And it yeah, doesn't I mean, actually... Sorry, Steve. I was going to say, you're, it sounds like a daily routine that you're doing. I, I would love, we'd love to share if you could share your daily routine because I'm... A big advocate of daily routines. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I'll um I'll share that just just in a mo, um in a moment. Sorry, my Kiwi colloquialism yeah. is coming through. Um, <laughs> I'll share it in a mo. So yeah, the the having the spirit. The first part is having spiritual practice in place because what does spiritual practice do? It raises our awareness. We, it calms the mind. We're more able to see clearly without the distortions of the mind getting in the way. It also raises our energy. So if, we, if the energy is raised, we're, we're more able to make high quality decisions quickly. And that's an inherent, it's, 
in its nature, as we increase our body, our energy in our body, as we increase our alignment, and I'm sure we'll get to energy shortly, but that's just going to have an exponential effect on, on our energy and on our alignment and on our clarity. And the more we get aligned, the more easy it is to fall into that, uh, as opposed to fall into the habits of the mind and fear and doubt, anxiety and, and downward spiral. So yeah, spiritual practice is the first thing. And the second thing that I would say is, <laughs> I'm a bit biased here, but get a coach in your corner, mm -hmm. a coach that knows you well and having one, one, one or two sessions with a coach is probably not gonna cut it. That will be of value, but actually getting to know someone over a long period of time where they understand they understand you really deeply, they, their relationship with you is able to develop and they're able to push your buttons at the right time that's going to serve you. You know, when you, when you get to know someone really well over a long period of time, uh, you, you, the coach has an intuition for where the person is playing small and where they are able to step further into their growth. Uh, so they're far more easily able to see where those limiting beliefs are, where the lack of freedom is, and invite you into a further expansion of freedom and expansion of yourself. Yeah, because sometimes we can sort of like because we're so close to it, we can miss a lot of these signals and these signs. Yeah. And so I think the coaches are really important for helping mm -hmm. us to bring that out of ourselves and for putting us in that in that space of understanding. And, you know, coaches have coaches. So, you know, a lot of the most coaches will have somebody in their corner that they also speak to um, on a on a regular basis so we're going to we're going to talk like i said about energy but first we're going to get back to chris's uh question yeah. about what is your routine regarding What's meditation routine? because because chris and i are both big meditators we love our meditation so um yeah so just tell us a little bit about what what you mean by meditation and and what you may how you may implement it into your life yeah beautiful so it's been it's been quite a journey for me the 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 morning routine and and meditation is a part of that i just see meditation is best done in the morning because then we get the benefits mm -hmm. throughout the day uh, morning and then evening as well if possible um <laughs> so yeah i i initially started i knew that one of the great things that my coach has always said to me is how you start the day becomes the day and uh, from another coach that, that that comes from is the genesis of a thing becomes the thing. And a mm -hmm. great example of that is if we bring a client on board that's not really that great a fit, we have to really convince and try and pull them along to, to jump on board with a program. We're going to be convincing and, and dragging that client along the whole time. Whereas if we've got someone who's inspired and keen and it's, it's, it's so much easier. It's so much better working with a client that's going to be like that because we're not kind of using our energy to drag them along to where they don't want to go the whole time. So same with the morning routines. How we start the, the thing becomes the thing. Uh, how we start mm -hmm. the day becomes the day. So uh, personally, my own morning routine has evolved from uh, very, very simple. It is still quite simple, but very minimal, I should say, to... I'll give you the ideal morning routine because if I'm a bit rushed and things, things are, if I've got, um, if I'm a little disorganized, then I kind of, or if I'm going through a busy phase, then I won't spend two hours doing a morning routine. I'll chop it down to the most, uh, the most important bits, basically mm -hmm. the, the bare minimum. So the ultimate morning routine for me would be to get up. Uh, well, to firstly think about what I'm grateful for. First, first thing in the day is what am I grateful for and just feel it. start the day with that energy. Uh, secondly would be to get up and just do some general movements of the body. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd drink some water or some lemon water. It depends how I'm feeling uh, before I do that. But I always start with the body, moving the body, just simple movements uh, of the wrists and then, and then moving to the shoulders, elbows. I just warm up all the joints very gently uh, and bring awareness to, the, to those joints. And the way that my morning practice is actually structured is I start from the, the, the most gross, the, 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 the physical body, and move into the more subtle aspects um, of our being as, as I go deeper into the practice. So mm -hmm. I always start off with a physical practice, uh, very light generally. So I've tried exercise in the morning first, and I prefer to do it later in the day. Uh, but, but I just wake the body up first thing. Uh, sometimes that involves a little bit of Qigong practice as well. 
then I move into a process which I can't tell you too much about because it is a process you need to go on the course to learn. It's, it's, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the name of the process is called Sudarshan Kriya. Um, mm. Actually, before Sudarshan Kriya, I do uh, some, some yoga, a specific yoga practice called Padma Sadhana. Uh, and then I move into Sudarshan Kriya. And the, the purpose of Sudarshan Kriya, Su means proper, Darshan means vision, and Kriya means purifying action. And that language is in Sanskrit. It's a, it's a yogic technique that comes out of India. And so, yeah, so through this purifying action, we gain a proper vision of who we really are. And it's a beautiful practice. Uh, I do it every day. It's a breathing practice. And it really just aligns all of the levels of our, of our being. Uh, in, a, in a spiritual sense, you could say that it aligns the energetic body with the physical body, with the mind, the emotions. You know, it just brings everything together and you feel very, very centered after doing it. And actually, most people don't need a meditation technique after doing it because you just feel so centered, you just fall into meditation anyway. Um, so that's that I go through a series of breathing techniques. That's the main one. Uh, and then I and then I do my meditation, which is usually about 20 to 30 minutes, um, which is a specific meditation technique called Sahaj Samadhi. Uh, once again, comes from Vedic India. And uh, that just gets me to a, a state of bliss. Uh, most of the time, some mornings are a bit rocky. Uh, some mornings the mind's a little bit active. Uh, but that's just how it is you know it's, it's not going to be a spiritual practice is not going to be this deep profound insanely spiritual thing all the time often it's going to be there's going to be some turbulence oh, and, absolutely um, the spiritual journey can be a turbulent one but it is so worth it once you can get into that alignment that we were about to talk about because you know everything around us is energy everything that that we see everything that we feel our emotions everything is energy and you've spoken a couple of times in, in the interview about the term alignment and how important it is to remain in that alignment so what do you mean by the term alignment um the best way i think of summing alignment up is i'm trying to define it by not using the word alignment is living <laughs> with complete integrity to our core values and our muse mm -hmm. yeah 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 that's and, it. I, and sometimes that alignment you know like you've heard that term balance and I, I don't know about you Oliver but I you know is there really balance or like harmony and I love what you just said there if you could you know shed some more insight into that area because it's never going to be perfect right and it's not gonna, you know balance is is not easy to obtain and it requires a lot of energy I love when you what you talked said that about alignment, but if you could share some more insight, that would be very helpful to the listeners. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's balance is like riding a bike. Like that's that's the the easiest example of balance. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we go too far this way, and so we got to counter, and we go too far the other way. Um, and it's the same with any aspect of life. It's the same with if we're putting in a a, a a specific diet or an exercise routine or a meditation practice or whatever it is you're going to fall off the bandwagon sometimes like it's impossible to be perfect all the time mm. and and finding that like if we just go right i'm going to meditate for two hours every day i'm going to be super disciplined and yes i i have a um, soft spot for discipline as well in the right context but if we just set that out and it's like, right, I'm just going to achieve that, but I'm also working on having a green juice every morning and I'm focusing on not using my phone after 8 p.m. and implementing all these things at once. It's like, yeah, that might be a great thing to uh, a vision for you in the future. And if we try and get there in a sustainable way, yeah. we're actually going to be able to achieve it. And so I think balance and sustainability, they just go hand in hand. And that's why alignment is a very, it's, it's a journey to achieve that alignment because you might go through phases of, you know, doing a, a med your type meditation, for example, doing a meditation technique and saying, I'm going to do this for half an hour every day. And you might fall off the bandwagon there and then come back onto it. And eventually you'll find something that works. Maybe it's just going to be starting with 10 minutes and then ramping up to 20 and then 30 or whatever. And then you might find, you know what, I've actually found that this technique technique's not working for me. I don't feel aligned to it. So I'm going to go and try a different technique or I'm going to go to a course and learn a, learn another technique, whatever. And then you'll find, oh, this one is something that I really, like I feel it's so effortless. I just want to get up and do yeah. it every morning. 
And so through that trial and error process, through riding the bike, going left, going right, we, we eventually found that center point, which is the, the practice you really align with. And it could be the diet you really align with or the way of communicating with your partner that you really align with or whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, that's, the, and, and what I do with my coaching is I help people to basically uh, bring that balance uh, sooner rather than going all over the place like this. Yeah. I kind of help people to find that alignment uh, and, and bring themselves back to what's true for them uh, more quickly so that they can find that alignment quicker. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, thank you for sharing. Okay, so we're going to delve in because we our podcast is focused a lot towards the entrepreneurs, a lot towards those that are building businesses and and trying to obviously, as we said, harmonize between their their life commitments because we all have life commitments. We're all busy. We've all got a lot of stuff going on, um, but we also want to be able to harmonize it with all the other areas of our lives whether it's our relationships whether it's our finances whatever it is so you talk about purpose-driven businesses and I'm a big one for soul-led businesses I'm a big one for you know allowing that spiritual part of you that that higher self to be able to help you to succeed, to be able to help you to figure out what your purpose is, figure out what your passion is, and then move forward with effortless um, ease and alignment. So if you were going to define a soul-led business, how would you do that? Mm, great question. Uh, a soul-led business, I, I would see a soul-led business and, and a purpose-driven business. I, I would actually see them as the same thing. Mm -hmm. um so yeah for, for both of those both of those terms i would see that as a business that is run in alignment mm -hmm. with the core values and inspiration of the founder at its core yeah yeah yeah, uh, I, love I, I, I love the core values as a foundation because it's so important because people subconsciously connect on shared values. And I think that is spot on and so important in how we think, you know, again, what you were talking about a little earlier. And when you look at that, like, you know, you were talking about a little bit about how people go, go about achieving that. What, what would be some things that you would recommend how people can really connect to those values to their own and other people and but, but do it in a way you know with the inspiration of the the leader in this case let's say it's the owner of the company in a way that empowers people rather than pleases and enables because one can be codependent one can be interdependent you know leading by example uh being a resource for people to do for themselves yeah well i, I would actually see as that that codependent and um pleasing uh, side of things, I would see that as not in alignment with core values, mm -hmm, because if yeah. you're sacrificing yourself in order to please others, I mean, we can please others, but if it's coming from that energy of, oh, I'm pleasing them, but I feel depleted myself, yeah. mm -hmm. that's not in alignment with, with I, I mean, I believe all of our core values, will, all, all of us would have the yeah. core value of feeling great and high energy, right? That's probably mm -hmm. something that we all share. And uh, if we're if we're sacrificing that to please others, then ultimately the pleasing of others is actually not going to be anywhere near as rich or fulfilling as it would be if we just filled our own cup first. So, yep. I, I and the way that I see that in an organization or a business is that the 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 founder in this case or the owner, the the CEO of the company, uh, would need to create clarity on what I would call clarity on life purpose. And I know that sounds very daunting, but you can, another way you could say it is clarity on core values. Mm -hmm. And if they know that, then they're able to uh, fill their own cup. And that's what I focus on is actually the, the person in charge filling their own cup first so that then they're able to give from overflow and be there for their team in overflow um, rather than be there from a state of deficiency. And mm -hmm. the most common thing that I've seen with business owners and entrepreneurs, especially sort of SME, small, small to medium sized businesses, is the belief that if 
I look after myself, if I nourish myself, then my business is going to topple over. And actually what I've seen is completely the opposite is if I take time out to nourish myself, if I take time out to do a meditation, to go on the course I really want, to spend the time with my family that I really want, uh, then actually the business starts taking off because they feel far more empowered, far more energized and far more inspired. And that trickles through the whole company. Absolutely. Well, you have, you have hit us with some real nuggets there today, um, Oliver. And we have thoroughly enjoyed talking to you, haven't we, Chris? Absolutely. I think, you know, Oliver, uh, you know, you're, you know, one thing I, I respect about what you shared, you're very genuine, uh, transparent. Uh, obviously, you went, you made yourself vulnerable to make these changes. And I know those are things I respect in values and people and something I related to that I did myself 23 years ago when I went through this change mm -hmm. from a, a codependent perfectionist to, uh, you know, everything that we're talking about here today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, I think, you know, many of us have been in those, those states that we, you know, have managed to bring ourselves out of whether it is codependence or, or other situations. And, and I really appreciate everything that you've spoken about. Internal freedom is so powerful. It's so important. Uh, we look so far onto the, onto the external freedom and the monetary freedom and everything else. But if you're not free on the inside, then how free are you really? So how can you bring that harmony into balance? So thank you so much for being with us, Oliver. Now, if people want to get in touch with you, um, mm. how can they do that? And um, yeah, what else would you like to say before we wrap up this call? Yeah, well, I'd love to share firstly, just um, we talked a lot about the uh, finding those core values and at, from, from the perspective of a company owner and living in alignment with that. And the, the belief around uh, if, if I really nourish myself, then, then maybe the business will crumble and that being complete nonsense. Mm -hmm. uh, so that might seem really scary and really daunting. And like Chris mentioned, a lot of vulnerability is going to be required from people when they step into their core values, because they're literally your core values. So mm -hmm. we got to show that. And it's a scary thing to do that sometimes. But I can promise you the most rewarding and fulfilling way of running a business is from the heart, from from your center, from your core. And uh, it's actually although that seems like some work at the time, some emotional labor, um, it's the most fulfilling and easeful way to run a company as well. So that, that was the last thing I wanted to share. And yeah, if people want to get in touch with me, they can either do so on LinkedIn. Um, my name's Oliver Larson. And uh, you can find me on, on, on LinkedIn or you can get in contact with me, Oliver at OliverLarson.com. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Oliver. And um, yeah, and I'll be, I'll put all of your details on the show notes when the podcast is published. Brilliant. Thank you for having okay. me here. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, thank Oliver. you. Thank you so okay. much, Oliver. Thank you for sharing.